can celebrate every baby shower and baptism and birthday that we missed. We can finally wrap our arms around loved ones. And we know vaccinations are the key to that. With Dodger Stadium, we are throwing open the door to that future. This mega site will bring the city's contribution to LA County's vaccinations to 20,000 people a day in our capacity between Dodger Stadium and four city operated sites and the fire stations that are vaccinating members of LAFD and soon other members of the city family. We are all collectively working around the clock to get to more vaccines more quickly. But I think when folks are confused out there, the central issue is we simply aren't receiving enough vaccines at the national level. And so I spoke with President-elect Biden yesterday with his COVID team as well. And I know that they are gonna do everything they can to work with manufacturers to ramp that up because here someone is infected every six seconds in Los Angeles. And here in LA, somebody is dying every eight minutes, every eight minutes. As terrible as those facts are, we have to celebrate good news when we see it, and that is with a vaccine. We can't drop our guard while this is happening. Continue to keep your distance, wear your masks, stay home, avoid gatherings, get tested. And you can still get a free test every day of the week. We are worried as we took this down as a testing site to a vaccination site, whether we'd meet capacity and we are, we have, and there are tests available today at coronavirus.lacity.org. We're expanding capacity at eight sites. We're adding mobile teams and we're building a new site at Pierce College in Woodland Hills. So again, coronavirus.lacity.org slash testing or by calling 311, you can still schedule a test while we're addressing vaccination. With that, let me move forward in our program and our guests. We've got, I know, a bunch of questions that'll come from the press, but please hold with us because we've got some really amazing folks. And let me first invite Stan Kasten, who is our host here today, to come forward and thank him on behalf of a grateful city, a city that's celebrating still that we will be the world champions until we repeat that again. And no pressure for you, Stan, but you have been an amazing friend. Thank you for you, and we're so sorry for your loss with Tommy. Stan Kasten. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I moved here because the mayor once told me that, you know, it's 86 in January here. I said, come People didn't believe him, but here we are. Um, I want to express my thanks and appreciation to all the people that the mayor mentioned. This is only the result of so many people having to pitch in, but you know, adversity reveals who you are. None of us like adversity, and needless to say, we have all lived through the worst year imaginable in terms of adversity, but on the field, the Dodgers showed they could overcome that adversity, and uh, Similarly, off the field, we are very proud that we've been able to show who we are through adversity, from becoming America's lar the world's largest COVID testing center, uh, to becoming a very large and important polling place uh, in November, uh, to the drive-through Christmas extravaganza that we had for our community, and now today, what is on its way to becoming the world's largest vaccination center. Um, for 60 years, this community has supported the Dodgers, and so we are pleased, proud, humbled, and honored to be able to support our community in the same way that they support us. So, as I said, thank you to everyone who has contributed and participated in putting this together. Um, the Dodgers will always be here to lend a hand in any way that we can. We are not near the end yet, but we are getting nearer and we're getting there every day. And very soon, it'll be time for us to be playing ball on these fields again with our stands full. And I hope I see all of you there. So thank you very much. Now, let me turn it over to Nuri uh, Martinez, our city council president. And thank you, Nuri, for being such a strong advocate for families during this pandemic. Thank you for being a great partner. Please welcome our council president. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And thank you. I'm happy to be here with the governor and Mayor Garcetti, both who have made extraordinary efforts to respond to the pandemic. For so many Angelinos, this has been an incredibly difficult year. And while we still have a long way to go, 
at least we know that entering this new phase, we now have a vaccine and we can now start having real hope. And I say that um, fully recognizing the responsibility that we all have now, the responsibility to bring in hope, not just as fast as possible, but to as many of our hard, hardest hit communities as possible. This facility is one step forward to doing that. In just a few days, we're going to be able to ramp up and deliver 12,000 vaccines a day. That's right, 12,000 vaccines a day. But we have a lot more work to do because we have so many more people in need. And that's where we must establish our priorities. And we must make those shared priorities, not competing with other priorities. We have to have shared priorities together. We need to get our healthcare workers and our frontline workers vaccinated. We need to do right by them. And we need to make sure that they stay healthy to get the rest of us through this crisis. But enough of this bureaucracy. We have the vaccine, and as we roll it out, we need to deliver it to the most vulnerable, including our seniors. And I'll be damned if any of the vaccine goes to waste or gets thrown out simply because we don't know how to follow regulations or the confusing guidelines, or simply because somebody refuses to take it. There are so many more folks that want it and need it today. There are so many lives at stake. I don't want this vaccine to go to waste. We have 4 million Angelinos, including our essential workers and people of color who deserve immediate access to it. And whether we do it now or, or, or later, some of those folks do not have time to waste. It can mean life or death for them. When this site is open and others across our city begin to open and other parts of the state, we need to ensure that we are addressing the hardest hit communities and that we are talking about access to this vaccine. The city is committing, committed to making sure that our residents have a place to get the vaccine as soon as it becomes available. This is about creating access, particularly in communities of color. We need to create access in these neighborhoods that have been hit the hardest. This is why last week I've asked the city departments to take an in inventory of our city facilities to ensure that we have places to be able to distribute the vaccine. The facilities should be concentrated in the highest risk communities within our city and in low income communities of color. Some say that goals of equity should be set aside and instead focus on getting more people vaccinated. But if this year has taught us anything, it's that inequity can no longer be ignored. If we don't focus on equity now, I'll tell you who's gonna get the vaccine. It'll be the people who have the luxury to stay at home and send their children to open private schools and neighborhood learning pods. And the people who will not get the vaccine will be the nannies, the maids, the housekeepers, and the gardeners, the people who check out our groceries, who prepare our food every day, who deliver our mail and clean our, clean our streets. Equity isn't about just checking off a box. It's just, isn't a word that you punch up because you wanna create more media posts for yourselves. It's past time that we do right by these neighborhoods and these communities and these workers. And as difficult as it will be, I know that our governor and our local elected officials here in Los Angeles are committed to figuring this out. As we roll out the vaccine, we cannot lose focus on distributing it quickly, but we also need to distribute it justly as soon as possible. This is how we save lives in the most vulnerable neighborhoods. This is how we thank our essential workers for risking their own lives on a daily basis. And this is how we ensure that these neighborhoods are not left behind yet again. There are workers throughout our city and a lot of Angelinos stood on the store steps clapping for our essential workers and saying thank you for your service, but that cannot be enough if we ignore the life-threatening risks that they take every single day during this pandemic. We are not that city. We cannot allow that to happen. For this past year, I've been humbled to lead the city council that has focused on the working class families of our city. These are the people that we have been fighting for every single day. The essential workers, our seniors, and our children to keep them safe. So I look forward to working with our governor and our mayor to make sure that we prepare quickly to deliver this vaccine to low income and immigrant communities throughout our city who do not have access to health insurance. 
These are the communities that I represent. These are the communities that I will continue to fight for. And these are the communities that I ask you all to fight for as well. We're all in this together cannot just be a slogan. For this vaccine to succeed, it needs to be a reality. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council President. And amen, amen. With that, I don't need uh, talking points to introduce my friend and our state's leader, uh, a man who I've seen, and he comes from local government, so he knows what this kind of a struggle to build something like this looks like. A man who, at a moment when the federal government has been missing in action, has been not just California's governor, but America's governor. And I want to say, because I know leadership at the top is tough and it can be lonely, that we are so blessed in this golden state to have somebody with the intelligence, the drive, the grit, and the heart that Gavin Newsom brings to this. We would not be here today without him. Please welcome our governor, Gavin Newsom. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Madam President, and Congressman, uh, Senator, and Mr. City Council Member, all of you. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Stan, thank you for once again stepping up, stepping in, doing the right thing. Thank you for being here unselfishly for the entire community. We were here just a few months ago when you opened this up, as you noted, uh, for early voting. You've done it with food banks. You've done it consistently in terms of the testing regime. And Sean, and thank you guys, the whole core team, for the incredible work that you have done in assembling so many volunteers and extraordinary civic leaders, leaders defined people in positions of formal authority, but more importantly, people that are exercising their moral authority and helping support others. That's the moment we're in. We're also in a moment of some urgency, and let me just be uh, quite candid with each and every one of you. We've got to increase the pace and distribution in the administration of these vaccines. The reality is we need to get these vaccines out of the freezer, and we need to get them into people's arms. We need to make sure, as the president said, uh, we need to do that with a lens of equity. Absolutely, not rhetorically. We need to commit and we need to be resolved in that effort. But we should not use that as an excuse not to move deliberatively uh, and move at the speed that this state and our nation deserves. At the end of the day, we continue to battle this remarkable moment in this surge, the most difficult and challenging surge we have faced since the beginning of this pandemic. The good news is we're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. Not just the light that vaccines provide, but light as it relates to positivity rate that's now declining in the state of California, case rates that are now declining in the state of California, hospitalizations that are now declining in the state of California, ICU admissions that are now declining in the state of California. The last seven plus days, we have seen some encouraging signs. But now, more than ever, it's incumbent upon us not to let our guard down, not to let our masks off, and to make sure that we're doing everything in our power uh, to maintain that discipline, that purposefulness, uh, to work our way through yet another surge. And so we're here, mindful of that, sober, with the reality that we face and the challenges that we face as a state and a nation. Uh, but today is a point uh, of emphasis, is a point of optimism. Today, uh, to celebrate collaborative spirit, celebrate leadership, to celebrate your mayor uh, for making sure uh, that we raise the bar in terms of expectation and we deliver uh, on what we're promoting and promising. I just want to say uh, to Mayor Garcetti, uh, he has been steadfast in his determination to get this site open, to get it operational, and to come down here uh, just days after uh, we had a preliminary conversation to see the incredible work he and his team, our firefighters, paramedics, EMTs, and all those county partners, including uh, those folks from U USC and others. Uh, it's an extraordinary testament uh, to people with resolve, with grit, and determination. 4,000 people will get the vaccines today. We hope that's the goal. Uh, this is just day one. The idea of getting to 12 plus thousand uh, will be significant uh, and will be a logistics opportunity, not just a logistics challenge. Dodger Stadium is joining many other mass vaccination sites all throughout the state of California. I was up at Cal Expo in Sacramento yesterday, much smaller site, but with a same and similar mindset of throughput and moving these and moving 
these administering these vaccines and moving uh, these vaccines out of the freezer and getting them into people's arms. We're seated down at Petco Park and the Padres uh, joining this same effort. We're seeing it in the Central Valley in Fresno uh, at other fairground sites uh, in the central part of our state, up in San Mateo uh, at uh, a number of different facilities. And we are working with other major league teams as well as minor league teams to open up similar sites as well all throughout the state of California. So you should be seeing more of this. It's not exclusively what we're doing. It's just additive. We continue to want to do more to provide more access at pharmacies, more access with your doctor, more access with the primary care physicians, clinics, all throughout the spectrum of delivery of our health care delivery system in the state. We have 3,500 partners in the state of California, 3,500 providers that are distributing the vaccine because of waivers, because of the determined leadership and expectations set by uh, the local leaders here. We have waived the ability for additional administrators, more vaccinators. Uh, we now have over 100,000 people eligible to provide vaccinations. 15 National Guard strike teams. We have dentists now that can provide vaccines, EMTs, paramedics. Uh, we have people across the spectrum in our health care delivery system, and you're going to continue to see more nursing students, folks that are retired coming back in to the health core and helping provide and support uh, one another. To date, 1.188 million doses have been administered. To date, 1.188 million doses have been administered. Uh, we are on pace to exceed our 1 million goal in 10 days. We'll update you more on that uh, when the dust settles on our data collection. I want folks to be mindful that the numbers that are often published and are out there are days old as so many providers are submitting their information, providing that information, and ultimately that information is provided to the federal government. We're looking to fast track that with better urgency, there's more transparency in terms of where we are, but we recognize more transparency and more application is the call at this moment. And so I want Californians to know it's like a flywheel. We're making progress. We're moving with deliberative speed. And may I say, as Mayor Garcetti said, how significant it is, the fresh air of progress versus the stale air of normalcy, the notion that we now are being able to move forward, turn, forgive me, the proverbial page, working with a new administration as early as next week, the fruits of their efforts in that transition will take shape. And all of us will be the beneficiary of that. More expectation, more transparency on when the doses will arrive. When we know when doses are arriving, it helps us with our planning purposes. It allows quicker and more efficient throughput, more capacity to get return phone calls, to have people that truly are committed bottom up to delivering uh, on this equity measure. And so I'm really looking forward to that partnership. And I want to just express appreciation. Just an hour or so ago, Vice President now President-elect Joe Biden announced his strategy to prioritize people 65 and over, his strategy for support for mass vaccination sites just like this, his strategy to support uh, the caregivers and support investments in our National Guard to help with the distribution and administration of the vaccines across the board. His plan mirrors the spirit and the letter of our guidance here in the state of Camp uh, California. So this is all encouraging. It's amplifying efforts that are all already underway. And I just want to thank everybody for all their extraordinary work. Uh, but again, mindful always of our responsibility to each and every one of you watching to do more and do better to quickly, safely, and efficiently, mindful of equity, move these vaccines out of the warehouses, out of the freezers, into people's arms. You deserve that. And we are looking forward to substantially improving and increasing that effort in the days, weeks, and many, many months ahead. So thank you all for being here. Deep gratitude again uh, to the mayor, city council, uh, for their incredible leadership to stand and entire partnership here at the LA Dodgers for making this extraordinary world-class site available for this world-class logistics operation. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Governor. And, and I know you privately spoke about how proud you are to have a California championship team. So thank you for that uh, as well. Um, we we're going to go to Q&A, but we have three extraordinary other people. And I'm going to ask them just to keep their, their, their uh, comments tight. But they have been critical parts of this. From the City Council, Gil Cedillo, whose district were in the State Senate, uh, Steve Bradford, who has led on equity statewide, as well as anybody I know, uh, and our exceptional uh, member of Congress. So I'm going to ask the three of them to come forward to say some remarks, um, and then we'll answer questions from the press, um, and I'll come back and say some things in Spanish at the end. Let's give them all a round of applause and thank them for being here, too. I'll be your sprayer. Thank you. Hi, Congressman Jimmy Gomez. First, let me thank the governor and the city council president, Nuri Martinez, as well as Eric Garcetti for this, this site. If you do the rough calculation, just back of the envelope calculation to vac vaccinate every single person in LA County, you would have to get up to about 100,000 vaccinations a day um, throughout the county. So we have a, and if you do the math for the entire uh, state, it's even bigger number. So we have a big challenge. But I have no doubt with uh, President-elect Biden becoming the president on January 20th, we're going to have a new, not only a new administration, but I consider it a whole brand new year. 2021 didn't start on the 1st. It's starting on January 20th, 2021, because it's going to be that much, that important that we have real leadership in the White House dealing with this pandemic. And that's what uh, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris are going to do. They're going to have the, the leadership and the expertise to tackle this problem. So I know that on day one, he will probably um, call upon the uh, Defense Production Act to get the necessary vaccinations in production and out to people in the states. So we have a lot of work to do, but it's gonna be a, a, a challenge that we're gonna tackle uh, one, uh, from the top to the very bottom. And I have no doubt it's not only gonna be a physical change, but it's gonna be a psychological change where the American people are gonna uh, stand up from the bottom of their knees and stand up proud to once again be American. So thank you so much. And I wanna just thank everybody that's here. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Come on forward, don't worry. I'll give it a good spray. Good afternoon. Senator Steve Bradford representing the 35th Senate District, but I'm honored to be here with my good friend Mayor Garcia, Eddie, our governor, for their tremendous leadership that they have provided on this issue, not only today, but since the beginning. And as a member of the Legislative Black Caucus and now the new chair, we want to make sure that this is a priority. It has always been a priority, not only for the Black Caucus, for the Latino Caucus, for the Women's Caucus, but especially for those people of color, as been stated, who are being impacted the most. They are our frontline workers. They are our essential workers. And we want to make sure that they not only are tested, but get this vaccine. They're dying at a higher rate than anyone else in this country. So this is critically important. It will be a priority under my leadership as uh, the chair of the Black caucus to work with efforts such as this here at Dodger Stadium. Again, want to recognize the great work and uh, partnership that Dodger Stadium has provided, um, not only uh, with testing, but now with this vaccination. And I just want, it's not missed on me, today would have been Dr. Martin Luther King's 92nd birthday. And I think he would be smiling down today, understanding how we have come together collaboratively to make sure that equity is distributed through our health care system. It's something that he fought for during his lifetime, and we're still, sadly, still fighting for it today. So as we celebrate on Monday, let's remember the words of Dr. Martin Luther King. We all can be great because we all can serve. Let's make sure we get out into our communities and provide the services that necessary to get these our constituents vaccinated. I also want to recognize Dr. Galley for his leadership in helping the legislature in the state of California and all that they do and making sure that, again, we get to the people who most need this, all people for that fact, but mostly people of color who are being disenfranchised and being neglected. So again, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Back and clean up, you know, everything there. can be said has been exactly. said. <laughs> Let me uh, echo the eloquence of the previous speakers, attach myself to them. Governor, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your leadership. 
uh, your presence says and sends an incredible message to the community that we are serious, that we are capable, we are willing and able to solve this problem. And it says to all of Angelinos, it's time to step up when the governor's here in town. So thank you, Governor. Appreciate your presence. Mayor, thank you for your leadership. As I say to you every time we t have this conversation, people don't know the, the way the city works and the way the county works. The city actually has no authority over health care. And I say that because from the very beginning, the mayor has been the leader in our efforts to combat this incredible disease. And so, Mayor, thank you. Leaders lead. Uh, I obviously, love you, Madam President, and thank you for your presence, making sure that our voices are heard. The question and the challenge of equity in our society must be confronted in every aspect of our lives. And so I thank you for that. Happy birthday, Martin Luther King. He said, the measure of a man is not where he stands at comfort and convenience, but where he stands at conflict and controversy. I want to thank Ann Lee and Sean Pan for your leadership, because when this conflict and controversy emerged, you emerged with leadership, with civic responsibility, civic duty, and embraced the challenges that have confronted us without pause, without hesitation, without title, without searching or seeking fame or, or notoriety. You emerged as a partner in this city to address, to address probably the greatest challenge health-wise that this city has ever faced. And so thank you and thank all of you for being here. We've got tremendous work to do, but confidence that we will go forward. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, but we need to embrace that. We need to run towards it. It is our solution and it is the resolution. It's a new day and it's a new time. And it's time for us and for the all Angelinos to move forward and embrace the opportunities that exist for us. Thank you very much. And finally, without uh, exception, I can never step on this field without saying thank you to the great Dodgers for their civic participation, voting, testing, vaccines, and then championship baseball. Let's go Dodgers. Amen. Thank you so much. Love you, brother. Thank you, man. Uh, thank you. Uh, I want to also give a shout out to Jeff Gurrell and Neeraj and everybody on my public safety team. I want to give a shout out to Secretary Galley, who was one of the best things we've ever exported from Los Angeles to Sacramento. Thank you for accepting some Southerners in the administration. Thank you, Naomi Rodriguez from the Dodgers and everybody else made this happen. With that, we're happy to answer questions and I'll give some Spanish remarks at the very end as well. And Governor, you may be uh, asking questions too, so you might probably want to come on up. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, most of the press corps had questions for Governor Newsom, Great. so I'll start with him. Happy to turn it over. <laughs> mostly for you. For you. They said most of them are for you. <laughs> but I'm behind you if you need them. Oh, yeah, thank you, man. <laughs> All right. Governor Newsom, it was reported today that the federal government does not have a stockpile of vaccines to send out. What does this mean for California's supply of the vaccine? And does this mean California will not be receiving any more shipments? When did you first learn of this? And have you spoken with Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar? Um, I have some more follow-up, but we can start there. Yeah, I know. We all heard about it at the same time. I was talking to some of my fellow governors. We put out statements that, are, that mirror one another in terms of our disappointment. We had had uh, an all governors call with the vice president and uh, the HHS secretary 48 hours ago uh, making commitment and furthering their resolve to distribute these vaccines. I was part of a letter, uh, a group of nine governors that requested the vaccines, particularly the 50 plus million doses that were estimated to be in storage in Michigan be distributed. A few days later, HHS said they would be distributing those doses. Uh, they confirmed that on the governor's call. Uh, and then we read, as everybody else, uh, that uh, they have reneged on that or for whatever reason are unable to deliver on that. We uh, already, all of us are working uh, closely with the incoming administration, hope and expectation we get some clarification uh, in the absence of any further clarification by the current administration. As soon as we know, we'll be able to communicate that more fully to uh, members of the public. Let me just say, though, briefly, that our resolve is to get all of the existing 
doses that are in this state administered as quickly and efficiently as possible. And we still have a lot of work to do in that space. We look forward to getting more. It will help us in our planning uh, and our distribution. Uh, but nonetheless, we still have work to do building more sites like this to increase that throughput. And how many doses have you ordered and how many more? We have we have received, uh, we've received, and that's the most important uh, number. We've received just over 3 million doses to date, uh, at least as of yesterday. Uh, those numbers get updated. Uh, in fact, usually around this time, I get uh, some additional information and we'll provide that as we do on a daily basis. But 3 million doses have been delivered to the state. How many more have you ordered? We have hundreds of thousands more that we anticipate receiving. Uh, but we now, obviously, based on what we've heard in the last 24 hours, want to confirm uh, that those doses indeed are available and will arrive. And that's why I reinforce the 3 million number, what we've received. And it's now our responsibility to get these 3,500 providers uh, up and down the state of California to administer uh, those vaccines in an equitable manner, but a very timely and judicious way. Your announcement that anyone 65 and over was eligible to receive the vaccine statewide emitted the reality that counties would in fact decide when to open up vaccinations to that age group in their jurisdictions. Many counties are still not ready. What do you say to elderly Californians who heard your announcement, left their homes, visited pharmacies, potentially exposing themselves to the virus, only to learn that what you said wasn't entirely true and they were not eligible to receive vaccines in their county. Well, what I said was was absolutely true. We, as a state, put out guidelines allowing for flexibility all across the state of California to allow people 65 and over uh, to have the vaccines administered. What we said uh, was clear as it relates to the flexibility within the tiers, maintaining our prioritization uh, in tier uh, 1A, or rather phase 1A, and then beginning to tier uh, into phase 1B, tier 1 and 2, 75 and over and 65 and over. Orange County has moved to providing vaccinations uh, for everyone 65 and over. Stanislaw has done the same. I was talking to Mayor Garcia down in Long Beach. She's moving in that direction as well. I think the vast majority of our counties will be moving very, very shortly in that direction. The purpose was uh, crystal clear, and that is to make sure the guidelines were not barriers and to provide the flexibility with a sense of urgency that's needed in this moment. And we were heartened to see a, the president-elect uh, double down on that call for 65 and over as well. Why did you delegate responsibility of the vaccination process to counties without providing adequate resources to do a vaccination program smoothly and efficiently? Well, we provided substantial resources. I have a budget that includes uh, $372 million additional uh, resources just for vaccinations. That's not part of the testing and tracing program. We have an additional $1.7 billion in the new budget we submitted just this time last week on Friday uh, for that purpose. Uh, this builds on the work we did with the legislature last year uh, to provide resources. Right now, uh, it's not uh, resources, it's a resourcefulness, it's a mindset. And that's why we've been moving in the last week uh, to provide more uh, ability for vaccinators, meaning provide more uh, categories of vaccinators, over now 100,000 people eligible to vaccinate. That's why we've been working hard with cities and counties, including LA, city and county, to get this site up and operational. It's why uh, we announced uh, the work that's being done, not just at fairgrounds uh, on the coast, up and down the state of California, but in the inland part of the state. So it's a flywheel, and we're working aggressively to increase points of access and increase more transparency and accountability for those 3,500 partners and providers all throughout the state of California that are entrusted to deliver these vaccines, to administer these vaccines. Given reports that there's no federal stockpile as expected, will California have enough doses for those who are due for their second shot in the next few days and weeks? Will counties have to pull back from vaccinating people 65 and up? Yeah, we, we don't see uh, any at the moment. Dr. Galley's here and Dr. Kelly can run up here uh, if he uh, has any additional thoughts to say on this, but we don't see any issues at the moment as it relates to second doses. 
We've distributed over and rather administered over 200,000 second doses to date in the state, at least as of last night. Uh, we are starting to receive second doses, and we believe the second doses will be available based upon what we have been assured by the federal administration. That said, uh, we are now mindful of the importance to verify uh, that information uh, even more uh, with more acuity. But current moment, doctor, I don't think the second dose issue is an issue in this state. He concurs. I just want to get this in as this has been asked by many people. What's your response to the one million people who've signed the petition to recall you? Uh, did, did you or anyone on your political team advise the California Democratic Party to refer to the recall effort as a coup? Yeah, I, I'm focused on vaccine distributions. I'm here with uh, deep pride and respect uh, for the people that made this mass vaccination site possible. That's my focus. That's where my energy is going. And so that's why I'm here uh, with confidence and expectation. And we'll build on the work that's been done here. And we can replicate sites like this up and down the state of California. Do you disagree with the characterization of it as a coup? As it relates to the issue of vaccinations, as it relates to the issue of testing, isolation and tracing, uh, getting the state moving again, reopening our businesses, reopening our schools. That's the focus. That's where my energy is, where uh, I'll be putting uh, most of my time and uh, respectfully not focusing on those issues. Do you have any timeline on when teachers will start to receive vaccines? They're in the tiered status updates. Uh, last week, you may recall, uh, we provided the first phase clarifications as it relates to flexibility within phases and tiers. Uh, teachers are in that flex plan. Teachers can be provided uh, those vaccines based upon availability. Again, we're still prioritizing healthcare workers, people in congregate facilities, skilled nursing facilities, assisted living facilities and residential facilities. But the next tier has opened up, phase 1B, as it's referred to, uh, and it provides for teachers, farm workers, food service industry, uh, and those 75 and over. I remind you, the idea is pretty simple here, and I think uh, the president summed it up very nicely. The idea, we don't want to see any vaccines wasted. We want to see them administered efficiently, and we're providing some clarification. Again, try not to create hurdles, create barriers, provide flexibility, and that flexibility uh, has now been provided in these updated health orders and the guidelines we put out, and that includes teachers. So why are we seeing some counties are getting to the 1B phase quicker than others? Uh, for example, even Long Beach City has moved quicker than the rest of the county. That's right. A lot of, lot of places. Reality is we're many parts, but one body. And the fact is 58 counties, 470, almost 480 cities in the state, different leadership, different methodology in terms of focus and energy, uh, different ideology. And so in each and every case, it's different. The state of California has received not one dose of the vaccine. The state of California doesn't directly administer the vaccine. That's done through a network of providers, not dissimilar to the network that's well established here in the state of California that advances and administers up to 19 million flu vaccines each and every year. That's done uh, through a myriad of providers, as I said, just in state of California, over 3,500 providers. L.A. Uh, County, it's over 1,200, roughly 1,200 providers, plus or minus, in that range. And so some are excelling, some are doing an extraordinary job, uh, and some uh, have a mindset where they're going to be a little more methodical, a little more focused. Here's the good news. We are in constant communication with the counties, and we are constantly working through what the issues are, what their challenges are, trying to be resourceful. We've provided almost 2,600 staff members uh, to the cities and counties over the last number of months, federal as well as state resources. Uh, we provided more flexibility in terms of those that can vaccinate. I noted uh, the efforts around paramedics, EMTs, and dentists, and noted that there's over 100,000 individuals that can do the same. National Guard, not only are they protecting the state capital and state uh, resources, but they're also at food banks today. They're also working in mass vaccination sites all up and down the state of California. So we're working through those issues, and I'm confident in the next days and weeks, particularly with the new administration setting the bar at 65 uh, and older, uh, that the vast majority of counties will be moving very, very quickly in that direction. 
California has one of the slowest rates of vaccination of, of its population. Is the strict prioritization of who gets the vaccine first, why this rate is so low? Well, it's one of the reasons we've made very clear, abundantly clear, the shift in flexibilities, the ability to toggle between phase one A and phase one B, tier one, tier two, why we're opening these mass distribution sites, uh, why we now have significantly increased our administration just in the last seven or eight days. We put out an audacious goal, a stretch goal of one million vaccines administered within 10 day period, 100,000 plus a day. Goal will be substantially greater in February and March. Uh, we're well on our way to meeting that goal. And so we're making tremendous progress and we're down here uh, extending uh, a narrative that, um, that promotes even more progress in the coming, not weeks, but the coming days as well. Can you provide any details about the National Guard's troops you requested to secure the state capitol, when they will arrive, and whether this was in coordination with President Trump? Uh, it was not done in coordination with the current administration. It was uh, done, uh, at least President, that is, was done, though, in coordination uh, with our federal partners at all levels uh, from the FBI on down. We have a joint operations center in the state of California. Uh, we look at all of the intel uh, with our federal partners, with our state partners, some international partners as well. We adjudicated those facts, not dissimilar to what has been adjudicated in other states. Governors uh, of all political stripes have substantially increased their security posture, moving into not just next week in the inaugural on the 20th, but also through this weekend. Uh, we did the same. I signed an order yesterday, a general order, providing up to 1,000 uh, National Guard men and women uh, to be deployed, critical assets corrupting down the state, not just the state capitol. We other put other security measures, perimeter measures in place. With respect, I'm not going to go into detail uh, about those measures. It would be inappropriate uh, from a security perspective, uh, but rest assured, we've taken this very, very seriously, and we're very grateful to the partnership uh, that we have received with our federal partners in law enforcement and the intel we've gathered locally. Uh, not just at the state level. Thank you so much, Governor Newsom. And I, I do have... Turning it back to Garcetti now, Yeah, right? <laughs> a couple more questions. God bless. Oh, you have more for me. Uh, sorry, uh, uh. We're, we are going to, I think, move to Mayor Garcetti. I'm being Excellent. told. Excellent. Good, good. That's the spirit. Hi. Hi, Mayor Garcetti. With... Dodger Stadium able to dole out 12,000 vaccinations per day and the other super sites opening on Tuesday, adding a total of another 20,000 per day. Will the county have enough of the vaccine to keep up with the demand? The short answer is I don't know. I hope so. And I spoke uh, with Dr. Ferrer last night. And right now we think we can hold on to that. But the result of that has been, I know, some pharmacies that the county had hoped to disperse more vaccines to uh, have to wait a week because the national supply simply isn't coming. It's not a problem with the state. It's not a problem here locally. We simply don't have the supply coming in. Um, but we do believe that those, what I was told last night is with those five sites, each one of the supervisorial districts and this, that we can sustain both those this coming week for sure. Do you support mandatory vaccinations for Los Angeles firefighters? Um, I hope every Los Angeles firefighter gets a vaccine. At this point, um, we don't need to mandate that. I think early on in this, whether you're a healthcare worker or a firefighter, you absolutely should to protect folks and to stop spread. But early on, if folks are saying no and have a declination form, move on to the next folks. Um, and there's a lot of people waiting right now who are at high risk of dying. Those folks over 65, people living in particular neighborhoods with outbreaks. So I don't mind moving on there. And I think for a lot of people, as they see people two or three months in with no effect and being able to reintegrate into society, there will be even more pressure and we'll get those numbers even higher. But right now, no, we, we're not mandating it. So several months down the line, if it turns out that many firefighters have not gotten the vaccine, will you look into making it mandatory? Potentially. Uh, and with our city workers, it's something that we're talking about, especially those who will be interacting with the public. Look, I think there's going to be a lot of things that push people uh, towards that. For instance, you probably can't get in Dodger Stadium for the first games if you haven't been vaccinated. Uh, go to concerts, um, do some of the things that are part of what we do. Uh, as we reopen the economy. So I think there's going to be a lot of incentive for people as they see how safe they are, how effective they are, that if they held back, that they will join that. Um, and just a point of clarification, my understanding is the, the Javits Center in New York um, has the capacity to do 25,000 vaccinations per day. Mm -hmm. So in terms of whether or not this is 
supposed to be the the largest in the in the country. Do you have more information on that? Yeah, they, they have that capacity. They're not doing anywhere near that. Um, and uh, uh, that that's if they ran a 24-7 operation. Similarly, if, if we run a 24-7 operation here, we can exceed that. This will be the biggest. Um, Frank McCourt, who, as I understand, owns the Dodger Stadium parking lot, um, mm -hmm. is is he charging the city of Los Angeles for use of this as a COVID testing no, he's vaccination not. site? No, and, and he's been a great partner. No. Nope. And so that's just being given for free? Absolutely. This is okay. the, really to him, to the Dodgers. It's been all done at no cost. We uh, have stepped up and shouldered a lot of the cost, uh, but are in conversations with the county and um, with incoming administration. One of the things that the incoming administration is talking about is 100% FEMA reimbursement for folks like our National Guard at the state level. Um, I encouraged um, the kind of COVID czar, Jeff Zients, to do the same thing uh, with the Biden administration's proposals for firefighters and other city and county workers that are essentially doing the same thing and this is for you um, or a, a public health official whoever feels more comfortable answering um, if necessary if people do not get their second dose um, immediately in other words if, if more than three or four weeks elapses is that okay if, the, if necessary yeah. to wait to give people their second doses until months later uh, when we have more doses is, is that okay I will always say I'm not a doctor first <laughs> but Yes, I learned last night from our uh, fire uh, assistant chief foreman that the guidance has come out on Pfizer that if you don't hit the exact date that it's fine if you go a week or two later. Um, and it is the expectation that that will happen with Moderna too. That should not let us ex uh, accept that the vaccines are coming too slowly. But for folks worried that somehow your arm will expire or the first dose will expire, I want to um, all the evidence and all the information I've been given is saying that's not the case and that's already come out officially up for, from, from Pfizer about the Pfizer vaccine. And how exactly do you propose uh, workers handle doses that are left over at the end of the day at, at city vaccination sites? So I was, uh, you know, as I mentioned, I, I worked the, the line coming in. I, I worked uh, with the pharmacists they, and, and I did a bottle myself. So you can get about 10 doses at the at, uh, the dosage level for the Moderna ones, and there's really nothing left there. You can't combine that less than a single dose because you take your um, syringe out, expose it to the air, and by putting it to another bottle, and that is not uh, acceptable right now. In a hospital and clinical setting, that is done sometimes um, from different bottles, um, but 100% of a full dosage is being taken out of each one of these bottles here. So if there's something left, it's less than a dose. Okay, and so can, can you just clarify if you're going to create a specific policy for mm -hmm. what happens if, if there are leftover doses somehow? If no, we don't, we don't create that because we're not a health department. We don't have a health department. We don't have jurisdiction on that. But we follow the guidance, and I know that the public health department of the county put out that guidance that nothing should be wasted. Uh, certainly, I, as I said last night in my press conference, use common sense. If, uh, if there's somebody who's been working the line uh, who's a volunteer at the end of the day and it's going to be uh, gone, put it in somebody's arm and instead of throwing it out. And I, and I think the Department of Public Health at the county level made very clear there is absolutely no guidance to throw out what's left at the end of the day. What we're going to do, I think, in sites like this is figure out a way to quickly communicate to people who are eligible, who can come with little notice, and come quickly to use whatever's left. And are you going to be standing up other mass vaccination sites besides Dodger Stadium? We hope to, uh, absolutely, and we're ready to. Um, initially, the county had asked us to look at Expo Park. I don't think they're going to change that from a testing center right now, though. That w would be another great place. Um, so our fire department has already have the contingency plans to move to other places. We're looking at those sites. As soon as we get the supply and the county says we need more help, just as we did with testing, we are ready to act. You see, this turnaround time, I, I texted the governor, what was it? five, six days ago about this, and we're standing here today. I mean, it was less than, yeah. It, it, we, we did this in just over a week's time, I think, maybe 10 days max. So this department, again, we say it, and it sounds like something that politicians just say, it is an exceptional department that knows how to figure this out. The core is an exceptional organization, and the friendship and the working relationships they have together, I think, makes this um, a partnership unlike anything else in the country. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, all right. That end of all questions? Okay, yeah. I'm going to say a couple things in Spanish, and then we are finding shade, all of us. <laughs> um, and I promise it's not the full speech. 
Hola, estamos aquí en el estadio de los Dodgers para transformar lo que ha sido el mayor centro de pruebas del país en lo que será uno de los mayores centros de vac vacunación en los Estados Unidos y en el mundo. Gracias al gobernador Gavin Newsom, a la a presidenta del uh, el Consejo Municipal, Nuri Martínez, la congresista también uh, Jimmy Gómez y Gil Cedillo, el concejal en este distrito, por su liderazgo también. Cuando este sitio esté funcionando a plena capacidad, hasta al mínimo 12,000 personas podrán recibir su vacuna aquí en el estadio de Dodgers cada día. Y llevará nuestra capacidad total de vacunación combinada en Los Ángeles a 20,000 al día por uh, los trabajadores de la ciudad, especialmente los bomberos. Y gracias a los bomberos, a CORE, y todas las parejas que son parte de este hoy. Por ahora, estamos empezando con los trabajadores de salud y los residentes y personal de las residencias con cuidado especializado en el condado de Los Ángeles. A medida que se fabriquen más dosis y el condado las reciba, pasaremos a los siguientes grupos de prioridad. Y ese día llegará pronto. Las vacunas son central en acabar con esta pandemia y con el estadio de los Dodgers, estamos abriendo la puerta a ese futuro. Pero aún así necesita mantener la distancia de personas que no viven en su casa, quedarse en casa lo más que pueda, siempre usar una mascarilla cuando sale y sepa que aún puede hacerse una prueba gratis todos los días de la semana, y no importa si tiene síntomas o no. Puede aprender más sobre las pruebas y hacer una cita en uno de nuestros ocho sitios en la ciudad en la página coronavirus.lacity.org diagonal testing. Pero mi mensaje es claro. Merecemos más vacunas, necesitamos más vacunas y necesitamos vacunas en nuestra comunidad, en la comunidad latina, comunidades de color, comunidades uh, con personas de bajos uh, ingresos. Y gracias al liderazgo de nuestro gobernador por California y por su trabajo a uh, dar esta vacuna a toda la gente. Gracias. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for bearing with the heat.